Shiver me timbers. Avast, it be booty dice. And I be reviewing it this evening. Okay, so this is booty dice. Uh, roll for the gold or die trying. It is ages eight and up, two to six players, 15 minutes. It is published by Messy Table Games, designed by Eric Olson. So let's talk about the quality of the components. Let's talk about the components first. So number one, the box size. This is really great for portability. Uh, it's nice size, everything fits in the box, uh, and you can take it pretty much anywhere. The artwork, the artwork is lovely. You got a very cool, very inviting, very, uh, well done box art. Uh, as far as the other art in the game, uh, it's really just the symbols on the dice, as well as the uh, tokens here, the shields, the doubloons, and the life tokens here. Uh, it could also represent kind of your crew on board. So very, very cool. Uh, the plastic insert that is included in the box is really great quality. Uh, some of these plastic inserts can be very flimsy uh, and crack, be prone to cracking. This one is very, very sturdy, uh, so I appreciate that a lot. It also can double as a fantastic dice tray for the game itself. Uh, once all the components are pulled out, you can easily roll the dice into here, pull out what you would like to keep, uh, and put it in this section here, which were originally displayed, you know, kind of there for display purposes, but uh, I think it works really well uh, for the dice tray and as you're trying to decide what you want to roll, what you want to keep, uh, very functional. You can pass it around the table. So I, I really like that plastic insert in here. The cardboard tokens are a really nice quality, a good thickness. Uh, again, uh, there's plenty of tokens here. Uh, one of the interesting elements to this uh, initial thought was as we started playing, uh, I initially was like, oh, I wish there was like some different delineation like uh, for the coin, right? So you have like some coins that are worth one, some coins that are worth five, uh, so that you could quickly see where people were at uh, in the game. The goal of the game is to acquire 25 gold or be the last pirate standing. But honestly, as the game went on, I, I really enjoyed the just having one, just the doubloons uh, and Basically, what we had, you just make stacks of money, right? You make stacks of five. People can easily see that. And it's just more fun to have more money, right? Uh, the dice. The dice are really, really great quality. Uh, so some of these dice, uh, some dice in other games uh, may have like, you know, like it printed flat on the dice. Uh, and you just get some more issues with that. Uh, they seem to wear off potentially. These are really nice dice. They are engraved uh, with a very nice color uh, that pops on the black. Uh, so the, the dice are, are really, really nice. How are the rules? The rules, again, the game is really simple. Uh, really what this is providing, the how-to, I just already talked about, 25 gold or last pirate uh, standing. Uh, the setup, everyone's gonna start with five doubloons as well as 10 lives. You're gonna roll up to three times. Uh, and so the rules basically set that out and then the different symbols, what they do after you've rolled three times. There's a few different unique uh, kind of dice combos here uh, that uh, are on here as well as examples. So the rules are great. Uh, there was one element in the rules that uh, from initial read through, I was a little unsure on. 
Uh, and that was the Black Beard's Curse. So I did seek uh, just uh, some slight clarification on this, that if you roll the Black Beard's Curse, do you resolve these dice individually and then the curse, or is it just the curse? Uh, and it is just the curse. So if you roll Blackbeard's curse, you're going to resolve this curse only. You're not going to resolve each of the dice individually and then the curse. So that was a, a slight clarification that I uh, did receive uh, from the designer. But the rules are straightforward, very easy to teach the game, get going very quickly. Uh, there's enough player aids for everybody. Uh, how many, uh, it's very kind of frustrating to me when I get a game and there's like two player aids for six people uh, and people have to share. Uh, so I really like the fact that there are six player aids in here. They are printed on basically the same material as uh, kind of the rules. Uh, but it is, that's that's the component. So let's talk, let's talk gameplay. So number one, it's quick and fun, right? The game has a nice duration to it. It doesn't overstay its welcome. You know, 15 minutes for this type of game. It's uh, fast, uh, gives people... Uh, time to enjoy it and but it's not going to you know go 30 40 minutes long right and you don't necessarily want that for this type of game uh simple for you know younger kids to uh learn and play and understand but fun for all ages uh there is that element there's there's a very you know direct take that element to the game. So that would be the only thing to watch out for, I think, with kids or those who may be a little more competitive than others. They may struggle with that. The game does provide uh, some really interesting choices. So do I go for the money right now, right? You have to kind of look at what other players are doing. Are people getting close to that 25, uh, how's their life? If they have a lot of life and a lot of money, uh, you probably need to start taking some of their money away. So maybe I'm gonna try to go for the Jolly Rogers here to steal uh, some of those doubloons. Uh, or maybe I go for, uh, we'll go over these a little bit later, but the shipwreck, which allows uh, all other pirates have to give three back. Or maybe even the Black Blackbeard's Curse, which is very powerful. Yeah, the pirates lose two lives. Excuse me, and give five doubloons to the buried treasure. So you're gonna be looking at that. Or hey, this you know this pirate has you know very few lives. Can I take them out this round? Uh, and it's kind of fun too. I like that the game doesn't restrict your actions. It's not like you have to decide beforehand, hey, I'm going to, you know, any attacks I roll this round have to go to you. Uh, you can split things up. Uh, the Jolly Roger, when you're stealing, you know, two per Jolly Roger, I can actually split that up and take one from this player and one from this player. Uh so it, it kind of provides a nice balancing mechanism too with that freedom of, you know, with more players, it, you know, from three to six players, you're going to be looking at that and kind of balancing things out as the game goes. Uh, so I, I think there's, it, it does that really well. Uh, there's negative icons in here. So let's go quickly through what uh, the different icons are. So uh, this one here, you simply take two doubloons from the middle. Uh, this one, one of those negative ones by itself, is you have to give two of your doubloons to the buried treasure. The Jolly Roger, talked about that. It's steal two from other pirates. Uh, the Cutlass, you get to attack a pirate. So in this game, everyone's gonna start with 10 life, right? Uh, but you can also acquire shields. 
Uh, if you roll a shield, you get to take a shield from the war chest or from the middle. And those will protect you specifically and only from the cutlass. But it does pry, provide some protection for you. So if you don't have any of these and someone chooses to attack you with a cutlass, you have to lose a life. Walk the plank, you have to lose a life. Uh, regardless, the shields will not protect you. So one of the things that I think are really uh, is, is great is these two uh, icons here are negative by themselves. Uh, but if you push your luck and you get three or more of them, they actually then hurt the other players and you are just fine. So instead of losing one life per each of these symbols, if you roll three, all other players lose a life. And each additional walk the plank, pirates lose an additional life. And shipwreck's fairly similar, but we're talking about the doubloons here. They have to give up three to the middle, and then each additional, they have to give up another one. So I like that. So if you rolled a couple of these, or you maybe even one, you're going to have that fun, interesting choice, right, of, okay, am I going to push my luck and try to get you know, at least three of those to pull this off. There's also the Blackbeard's Curse, which we talked about earlier. Very powerful combination here, uh, but very tricky. You know, playing Yahtzee, one of the hardest ones that I feel like, other than the Yahtzee itself, is coming up with that, like, large straight, right? And uh, that's what this is. Uh, so I think the the options here it provides uh, are really fun uh, and uh, provide uh, some great things there. Player elimination. So this does have player elimination, right? And so some people, you know, you may hear that and, and be turned off right away. But the thing about this game is because it has that balancing mechanism with multiple players, you don't want... No one wants another pirate to be getting the treasure, right? They don't want them at 25. So everyone's going to be kind of helping balance that element out. Uh, and so it it's one of those things that, yes, there is player elimination, but you got to think about the time of the game, right? 15 minutes. Uh, when people start uh, being eliminated, when they start... Uh, starting to being eliminated, uh, the game's about over, right? So it is not long. It's not like someone's going to get out very early on in the game and have to sit there for the 10, for 10 minutes. Uh, it's going to be a much shorter time. So uh, even though it has player elimination, it's not a great, uh, it's not a big impact. Uh, people aren't going to be bored uh, for very long. They're going to be laughing and enjoying the game. Uh, and I, I, that's one thing I appreciate the most laughter and uh, kind of fun that uh, people are having with this game came from those negative icons and people, you know, deciding whether to push their luck and they get it or they don't get it. Um, it's, it, that was, that was really fun. The uh, player count. So it's nice that it works uh, two to six players. That's a great range for any game. And especially for a nice, you know, filler like this, uh, to have that is nice. Uh, it plays best three to six players, but the, it is still fun with the two players as well. Uh, the game doesn't limit your choices. So I mentioned this before, but just to be clear, uh, as far as restrictions, so you can re-roll any dice. Some of these dice games, uh, like in Bang the Dice Game, when you roll like a dynamite, that locks it in place. Uh, you can't re-roll it. Um, which in that game, very thematically, and it works in that, uh, way. I do like in this game that you're very free. You don't have things restricted. Uh, so you have a lot of options. You can bring in dice again. So I like that freedom in the dice roll within this specific game. 
Uh, and last but not least, uh, so in asking people, you know, their thoughts in the game, uh, one individual had commented that they would have liked to maybe see uh, some more dice combinations. Uh, and uh, I think the game is great as is, uh, but we kind of had some fun coming up with, well, what if, what would those different combinations be? Uh, so it's one of those things that you can come up with your own uh, kind of combinations of dice and things. And so in our discussion coming up with that, uh, my favorite example was uh, there was a discussion of, oh, it'd be cool if you came up with a way to gain life uh, back. And so we were talking, well, it would need to be pretty risky to do that. How would we do that? And it became pretty obvious hey, what if you roll three walk the planks and three X marks the spot? And you could either choose to resolve them as normal or you could just simply gain four life. And so uh, that's that, that has been pretty fun to you. So uh, that is Booty Dice. Uh, very nice quality game. Uh, very portable, very fun. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Played with uh, my family, took it to work, played with coworkers, uh, and it's it's been uh, a big hit. So that is Booty Dice, and that is how Lou sees it.